Hey, good morning and welcome to the Snow Day edition of ECE 521 videos. Uh, I'm going to be recording a few things to make up for the class we lost to Snow Day last night. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is conditional density. This is uh, not too different from the conditional probabilities we've seen, but it's an important tool we need in order to uh, go on to talk about hypothesis testing. So I just figured I'd break it out in a separate video. I'm going to do a short explanation of both conditional density, how it relates uh, to con conditional distributions, and also how we use Bayes rule to flip these things around uh, and show you where the uh, conditional probability comes from in terms of continuous random variables. And then I'll do a very simple example like some of our, our spinner uh, problems in class. Okay, so moving on to the next page. The uh, conditional density uh, begins with the conditional distribution, or it's, it's easiest to think about where it comes from for a conditional di distribution when I have a, a continuous random variable, uh, because that's always well defined. If I say, if I want a conditional distribution, so I'd say that would be capital F of X on some event A, and the arguments, the outcome would be little x of A, well then that's just a straight up definition with a conditional added in. So I'd say this is the probability, like every distribution, it's the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to the argument given the event A. And then we say, well, that's just a conditional probability of one event dependent on the other that we've seen before. So I could say, well, that's just from directly from the definition. That's the probability that the random variable X is less than little x and A happens, normalized or divided by the probability that A happens. All right, so that's just a straightforward definition. The reason I'm going through it is, is that this is often the most direct route in, in some problems to get to the conditional density we're going to need in a second. So if we go on to talk about the conditional density, it's really the same relationship we've seen. Uh, between distributions and densities already. So the conditional density, just looking straight ahead, we'd say that that's little f of x given a as a function of its argument is the same as any other density. I just take the derivative with respect to the argument of capital F, capital F of x of a. And so while this may not be well defined in its own right at first glance, you can't say, well, you know, it's a continuous thing. I can't directly relate it to a probability. Again, it's about the slope of a conditional probability. And this is completely straightforward, right? We've seen things like this and for conditional probabilities. So that's uh, two of the things we've seen. The last thing that's kind of tricky is that we need to, to work through is a, a little bit new is, uh, let, me, let me start on a new page here, is the uh, probability conditioned on a continuous random variable. And this will be another thing we're going to need when we go to find likelihood ratios and other hypothesis test decision rules. And so I'm saying, well, I want to be able to talk about what's the probability that some event happened given that I observed, I guess if, if I want to be, let me be a little more careful here. I might say that some continuous random variable, capital X, takes the value of a little x. So how do we define this? Well, again, we're going to start by using the idea that the, the, uh, this is uh, an using an incremental approach. So we're going to say we're going to say the probability, and this is maybe not rigorous, but since it's an engineering class and not a math class, we can sort of use this limiting thing, and it's not that far wrong. Well, it's not wrong at all. It's just uh, a little simpler than, than the fully technical derivation. But we say this is basically going to be equal to the limit as some delta x goes to 0 of something that's a lot like the conditional probability definition. So we're going to say it's the probability of A and the event that the random variable capital X 
is in some little region that's delta x wide. Okay, and then since that's the conditioning event, we're going to put that in the denominator as well. Okay, so we've said it's like I've got this, instead of worrying about it exactly at, at one point, because that gets kind of confusing, we say we know in conditional probabilities it's often not, or for continuous random variables, I'm sorry, for a continuous random variable, the probability that any exact value of little x happens is zero, but I can talk about this ratio of these two like this very well. And then we say, well, the, the next step we do is we're going to approximate these probabilities. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, the next step is we're going to use Bayes' rule to break up the numerator. So we can say, well, this is the same. Let me actually, I'm going to sort of scroll this back to the left to make sure I have room to write this all. It's still the same limit as delta x goes to zero. But now I'm going to use Bayes' rule on the numerator to say this is the probability uh, and, and flip things around. I'm going to say, so now I'm going to condition on A. So by using Bayes' rule, I can say this is the probability that X is between little x and x plus delta x, given A, which is some event, some set of outcomes, times the probability of A, right? This is just, this joint probability is the same as the conditional written like this times the probability of A. And again, the denominator is unchanged. So I still have x's between, in this tiny interval, little tiny interval between x and delta x. Now I'm going to use the approximation we've mentioned before, that, that if an interval is very narrow and a, and a density is smooth, so we're assuming there's no delta functions or singularities in this region delta x. This, this derivation technically only holds for, for continuous smooth probability function, or uh, uh, yeah, we, we can't have any singularities, at least. Uh, I can approximate this probability by a density times delta x, right? We say that if, if things aren't changing too much, we saw, I can rewrite, let me just sort of highlight it here, this, this term here, I'm going to rewrite this as some, this is approximately equal to f of x given a, times the width of the interval, right? So the, we say the probability, which is the area under this thing, or, or this, this probability can be written as the area under this times delta x if this interval is so narrow that this isn't changing much. So let me put that in the numerator. I'm going to have the conditional probability is now replaced by the conditional density times the width of the interval delta x, and I still have that probability of a hanging around. And I'm going to use the same narrow interval trick in the denominator as soon as I sort of scroll up the page here. So my denominator, I can say, is now not the conditional PDF, but just the general PDF, f of x, delta x. And now this helps us oh, still limit as delta x goes to zero, because I can look at this and say, since I'm canceling things, let's, let's do it aggressively in red. Those delta x's go away, and so the limit doesn't depend on them anymore. And so the limit, I can actually just write out the limit here. I'll scroll up one more step. And so I can say that, that, uh, let me, uh, oops, one too far. All right. Now let me say, we're back to here, our final answer the probability of the event A given that some random variable, continuous random variable x equals little x, is the conditional PDF times the probability of A all over the general PDF of f of x. So that's the uh, the description of that. Uh, what it what does it mean, or how do I interpret it? What the way I often think of it is is I sort of let me sort of highlight. I think of these ratio densities 
are scaling the original probability. So, you know, initially I had some probability the event happened. Knowing, if you tell me I observed this continuous random variable little x, of that given value, how much does it increase the probability that A happened? Well, it has to do with how the density, the conditional density relates to the overall density. If x and A were independent, these two would be equal, and I'd just be left with the probability of A, which is to say the, the probability of A doesn't change when you tell me that I saw little x. But if, uh, if this particular value of x is a much higher value of the density given A happened than it does in general, like, like knowing that A happened increases this density, it means I'm going to jack that probability up. I'm going to increase it. And similarly the other way, we say, well, the probability that you saw that x given that A is true is very small compared to how often you see that x in general. That, that, that value of x is, usually happens when A is not true then this, this ratio would be much less than 1, and overall the probability would go down. Okay, so I think I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to pause here, and I'll do a, a separate video for the, the uh, example using this. But again, just to, to go through, we've gone through it, uh, defining the conditional density is often most easily found by first solving for the conditional distribution, and then taking a derivative. And then secondly, the other tool we'll need for binary hypothesis tests, the uh, probability of an event given a continuous random variable we found is the ratio just as, as shown here where I can use my my uh, my laser pointer is, is what's shown here the ratio of the conditional density to the unconditioned density scaling the original probability of the event okay so uh, that's the first piece for for today on binary hypothesis testing or building up towards binary hypothesis testing uh, I'll, I'll record the next the example of, of applying uh, these ideas and, and some examples finding the conditional density via the distribution, conditional distribution, and then also an example of finding this conditional probability uh, in an example video in a second. Thanks.